Hi, my name is Chelsea Matthews and today we'll be getting a foothold in pangenomics. A pangenome models genomic variation within a population and that population could be as specific as a single tissue or as broad as a high level taxonomic unit. Likewise, the variation that's modeled by a pangenome ranges from the very small, like SNPs and indels, to very large structural variants and also extends to gene presence and absence within the chosen population. Of the three types of pangenomes here, a collection pangenome is the simplest. It's literally just a collection of genomic sequence from a single population. And those sequences could be anything from raw reads to reference quality assemblies. Here we've got the Pac-Man ghost reference genome and the genomes of three other members of the Pac-Man ghost population. The colored regions indicate sequence that's not represented in the reference genome. A collection of pangenome is primarily a starting point for constructing other types of pangenomic models. A graphical pangenome is made up of a set of nodes and edges. Nodes are segments of genomic sequence and edges dictate how these segments of sequence are joined together. Here we have a graphical pangenome constructed from the collection pangenome on the left. And you can see that by following different paths through the graph, we can reconstruct the sequences that it was made from. So for example, the baldy ghost genome is reconstructed by following the path indicated by the dashed line. Graphical pangenomes reduce reference bias, which is seen in improvements in variant calling and genotyping accuracy. As a result, they're beginning to be used in the place of a single linear reference genome, but there are still a few challenges to overcome before this approach becomes mainstream. At a higher level, graphical pangenomes have applications in precision medicine, for studying structural variants within a population, and for studying the evolution of closely related species. A presence absence variation pangenome models gene presence and absence within a population and completely excludes intergenic sequence. They're often visualized with a Venn diagram. Uh, they focus on identifying a core genome, genes that are present in all members of a population, and an accessory genome, genes that are present in only some members of the population. The core genome is thought to be mainly made up of genes necessary for survival, while the accessory genome contains genes associated with variations in lifestyle and evolutionary trajectories. Presence-absence variation pangenomes are very well suited to linking phenotype with genotype and can also be used in species delineation. Pangenomic models allow us to make use of genomic data from multiple members of a single population. Using a graphical pangenome in the place of a single linear reference assembly reduces bias our analyses. And presence-absence variation pangenomes give us a unique insight into what makes a particular population or individual unique. This has been the briefest of introductions to what's a very broad and rapidly developing field. And I'd love to talk to you more about how we can build and use pangenomic models.